and it's time. Hi, uh, my name is Jan Vieremievich and thank you for coming to uh, this presentation. Uh, it's a sponsor track, but I will not try to sell you anything uh, and I will go into the details as we proceed. So I'd like to focus on who I am uh, as I'm a product manager for uh, Percona uh, and I focus on PostgreSQL. I come from experience in multiple areas, uh, mostly uh, monitoring software, uh, but I've been uh, a DBA and a, a developer uh, in my life uh, for quite, quite a while as well. Uh, I, forever, I disliked presenting publicly because creating a deck with uh, images that I felt safe to add on a public presentation felt like a drag. And fun fact is that this time I will try to put as many AI-generated images about elephants in this deck as I can, because it's so much fun. Uh, so uh, you'll most likely see uh, those images uh, following from now. And one thing to add about Pericona uh, is all of the software we provide for you is open source. There is no strings attached. It's free open source software. So we do not have non-open software that we provide. We do not push somebody into using non-open software, uh, not open source software, because some capabilities are not there. Everything we do is open source. We started doing MySQL, then we added MongoDB, and now we are also trying to do our work in PostgreSQL. And this uh, talk um, uh, focuses on, on, on the work we have been doing uh, for PostgreSQL based on our observations across multiple databases. You can also find uh, us uh, being part of the well, I like to call it Valkyrie Revolution, where Redis uh, pulled the rug on open source and uh, a bunch of companies uh, led uh, by uh, Linux Foundation decided to uh, take a stance against it and, and provide an open source alternative uh, to Redis. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we do uh, push open source where we can. Uh, we are known for uh, services around open source databases. As, as, as you understand, providing free open source software uh, does not put bread on our table. Uh, open source services do. So support main services uh, or consulting is where we do make money. But we want customers to grow into the usage uh, of open source and, and then uh, to come and ask us for the money rather than uh, require them to pay for our products. Uh, as I'm a product manager with technical background, I, I, you may expect some technical details. There they won't be much. Uh, I will uh, try to share our journey into uh, providing TDE for PostgreSQL, why we did it, uh, how we did it, uh, what we encountered, and where we do we want to go forward with it. Obviously, also, what's already available to you. So, as you may have noticed, the title uh, is uh, kind of uh, a, a, a switcheroo uh, to, to, to uh, the emperor's new clothes uh, folk tale, uh, tale by Hans Christian Andersen when, when a couple of uh, swindlers or conmen <clears throat> convince uh, a, a king or an emperor uh, that they will uh, create the most uh, amazing clothing for him. Uh, but this clothing is go only going to be visible uh, to those uh, who are uh, not stupid and are not incompetent. So basically, if you are incompetent and stupid, you won't see it. And until a kid comes to the, to the king and, and, and basically cries out loud that uh, the king is naked, uh, well, or the, the emperor wears no clothes, uh, the king is convinced that, that he is wearing them because he is afraid uh, to say that he uh, is naked and everybody who sees him uh, are as well. So, so, who is the emperor in this story? Well, I allowed myself to put in uh, a, a screenshot from um, the recent Stack Overflow survey. It's the second time in a row uh, that PostgreSQL uh, comes on top uh, of the open source databases. Uh, it's it's clear that PostgreSQL, uh, being a project uh, loved and cherished by so many, uh, can, is, is, is the king in our story. So to, to face the, I had to do that, to face the elephant in the room, uh, here similarly to, to what we see in, in Emperor's New Clothes, uh, I and a lot of fellow 
Perconians and also uh, customers and uh, PostgreSQL users who I spoke to feel that there is a huge lack uh, in current PostgreSQL uh, enterprise capabilities being the lack of the native uh, data address encryption. Uh, obviously, there are ways to go around this, but comparing to other databases out there, uh, we do have a capability that is, that is missing and is requirement, uh, required on, on, on that enterprise level. <clears throat> so why do we talk about TDE? So uh, I have to go back for a second to, to something we're kind of bold about, like, 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 and, and we want to put out there, is our mission. We really truly believe in what, what, what we say on the screen. We, we do believe that it's better that if the, opens, uh, if the software is open source and enterprises or, or companies or people are not limited by the uh, licensing fees and can uh, create better uh, solutions for all of us, also for them, and grow their business based on that. So, so this is why, why we started by uh, Peter Zaisev and, and Vadim Tkanchenko uh, started, started by adding uh, enterprise capabilities onto MySQL and giving them back to community as an open source product. This is why we are adding uh, features on top of community MongoDB and bringing them back to community so everybody can use them uh, without have, having to pay any licensing fees. And th this is why we want to address the gap in PostgreSQL that prevents some companies from using it or puts them in a very unpleasant situation where they have to consider proprietary software based on PostgreSQL that provides uh, TDE rather than use an open source product while they have uh, policies that require them to use uh, open source or to put open source ahead of proprietary. The topic of funding open source is a top, separate topic and I to fully agree that those companies should do something about it by, by contributing, but this is not the uh, focus of this track. The focus is that since we are speaking to those companies, we want to help them to adopt PostgreSQL by providing this solution. So what I, I, I wanted to bring a couple of, some of them funny, answers to uh, why do we need TD? So, so one answer, I, I actually hear quite a lot is that, well, doesn't PostgreSQL already have TD? Because it actually is an expectation these days. When you look, I'll use horrible names, Microsoft, Microsoft IBM, Oracle, when, when, when you look at those uh, companies, they do provide TD. When you look at the MySQL, it does provide TD. When you look at Mongo, it does provide TD. Yet, we look at the most popular database out there, and it doesn't. We have been speaking uh, as a community uh, for over a decade now about introducing this, but it did not happen. Uh, there is no open source solution, as I mentioned. There are uh, multiple solutions that are based on PostgreSQL and do provide it, uh, but, but you can't even try it without having a license to it. Uh, so I also want to point out that there are encryption solutions for PostgreSQL, and, and those, those solutions exist, yet they are not TDE. Uh, PG Crypto or PG Sodium are extensions that do not provide transparent data address encryption. They're definitely not transparent, let's say. Uh, they, they provide encryption capabilities, key generation, and so forth, uh, yet this is not what companies come looking for when they're asking for the database to encrypt the files for them in a way that does not impact the users or the applications, because this is what transparent stands for. So some of the uh, newbie answers uh, that I actually encountered while Googling uh, different uh, re questions on forums about TDE is actually people often confuse what TDE is. So one of the point, uh, points, points that is brought uh, quite often actually uh, to, uh, is, is that people uh, uh, mistake it with, with uh, the capabilities provided by, uh, by uh, SSL. Uh, or HTTPS. So, so I wanted to bring like a, a Wikipedia def definition, but I figured that since I'm using AI so much, let's, let's ask uh, one of the AI uh, bots to provide one, and it's actually very nice. It points out a couple of uh, issues we are going to fa face on. So I will actually around, uh, allow myself to read it out. I try not to read from slides, but here I will. So transparent data encryption, or TDE, is a security technology used to encrypt data at rest, meaning the data store in database files on disk. 
TDE ensures that even if someone gains physical access to the storage media, they can't read the data without the proper decryption keys. This, is a, this already points out uh, an answer to one of the, uh, the next uh, um, questions that, that are going, going to come to the next slide, so please try to uh, have it in mind. So coming back to the newbie answer, as you see, uh, the encrypted with SSL or HTTPS is the data in transit. So this is the data that, the, uh, that comes from the executor, from the app application user, from the database user um, to the database, rather than data at rest, so data staying in the files on your file system, which is uh, handled by TDE. So one does not exclude the other. It's they, they should be, both of them should be there because they basically uh, aim to protect you from di different vectors of attack. So asking dev developers, it's actually, uh, this is an abbreviation or, or, or let's say aggregation of a lot of answers. Technical solution exists. This is actually uh, something uh, that I hear very often. I heard this very often on this conference. One of the most commonly discussed topics around our booth was why do you even bother to introduce TDE? You can encrypt the hard drive. You can encrypt on the operating system level. Why, why do you do it? Well, first of all, like I, I, I will show now the my, my love story with AI generation, my, I really love it. Like you have to try it. Like elephant in different situations make, makes life m way more fun. Uh, so definitely uh, you're not sure when you're, where your PII data is or are you. With all the certifications, I guess you do know. So if you do know, why do you want to encrypt everything? Encryption actually does cost overhead. So pointing out to particular places that, uh, that do have PII, makes quite a lot of sense. So also, please respect the fact that you, when you backup and you encrypt the hard drive, the backup is not uh, encrypted. And in the scale of organization, I totally get it that you can say, yes, we have encryption tools for backups. We, we will use specific tools. Will you? If you're a couple of thousand com uh, people company or tens of thousands of people company, you have a new employee, are you sure that everyone is going to use them in the proper way? Is your scaling of people going in par with your procedures. I, I guess standards say kind of otherwise. So also, please take in, in mind that security, I like to put Shrek in here, is uh, Shrek elephant. Uh, and and uh, <laughs> security is like an onion. Uh, so, so definitely thinking about layers of security is the way to think about it. One does not exclude the other. You can go ahead and encrypt your operating system or hard drives, that's fine. But Adding the extra layer of security for TDE is something that we hear is required very often. But the most critical answers we hear, uh, or I do hear, as a product manager who speaks both with developers, users, and companies, is that actually they have to look at a lot of different policies, standards, like regulations, and so forth. One thing that summarizes them all is compliance. They have to be compliant with some document that somebody created. And I've been in this situation in my former roles where an audit uh, team or a security team comes to me and asks me about the PII data and how do we protect it and how do we anonymize it. And this, uh, this is the most, most horrible story you can have, discussing with them what you do and how you do it. On, uh, yeah, and I've seen, I've spoken to those five other guys and they actually do encrypt their data files. How do you do, uh, encrypt your data files? With what uh, algorithm? We don't, PostgreSQL does not allow that. That's not an answer you want to give. That's definitely not a place you do want to be in. And this is uh, my story with uh, standards. So preparing for those presentations, I actually read some of them. This is crazy, like, like I do not recommend to anybody reading this boring stuff, but I did. And one of the uh, interesting observations, uh, rather other than a lot of weird abbreviations and like that we love those, uh, is that there is something common about them. Uh, well, yeah, compliance, but a lot of those policies do not consider that encrypted data leak is a data leak. Like, let's rewind. If the data leaks and is encrypted and the company cannot prove that the key is leaked, they do not treat it as a data leak, meaning According to the standards, if the data leaks, you have to inform the users or customers whose data leaked. You have to inform authorities. Very often you have to do it publicly. You have to have an investigation. If, if you encrypted the data, you don't. 
That's, that's, that's a risk management uh, strategy. That's a risk management policy to have layers upon layers to make sure that you're not in trouble. I've heard once here during the conference that data encryption is very expensive. Is it? Is, is telling your users, your customers, that your data leaked not more expensive? So again, I've been a project manager as well in the government, uh, prov in the company providing software for government. And trust me that this is not a risk that they do want to take. So again, addressing this, uh, if somebody did address this actually, uh, in all those situations, uh, we would not have those, this, this information. This, this data would not have leaked. Uh, you can also notice that a lot of those is that that data was not encrypted, but some of them is there was unauthorized access. So now think about encrypting the operating system or only or the hard drive. And the first one is the doctor that has been browsing the data of some celebrities. So the doctor most likely would not have access to the database directly. Uh, of course, this is just a, a one situation, but you can easily think of a sysadmin. So again, layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. The more layers that the intruder or a person who tries to gain unauthorized access to the information has to go through, the more secure you are and, and, and the more protected from the risk of unauthorized access you are. The more, uh, the, the, the better uh, um, encryption algor algorithm, so there's also over, uh, obviously government regulations that actually say how strong a, a, an encryption has to be, uh, the, the more protected you are as well. And actually I want to say that I wasted three days preparing this slide because I really tried to make AI give me the information. Please don't. It hallucinates so much when you try to ask it uh, about this. I, I actually framed the question, please give, give me information uh, of, on, on security leaks that could have been prevented if the data was encrypted, but happened because an employee misplaced data. It's horrible. Like I, I got all the pos possible leaks with great stories, uh, but actually they did not happen. I ended up going back to Google, good, good old uh, Google. So let's take a look at the, uh, well, PostgreSQL competition, let's say. Or, no, not, not competition, but the other databases maybe uh, out there. So we tried to, uh, while implementing, uh, doing my, my work, uh, I figured let's take a look at all the other solutions and what's common about them, what's different. Can we learn something, uh, what those companies did, and, and, and put it uh, into action for PostgreSQL? So uh, these are just a couple of uh, observations. So all of those work on the block level. Uh, uh, all of those uh, don't require you to restart your database. That's actually great. Um, and they give you, most of them, a choice uh, of uh, algor algorithm to encrypt. They definitely put a strong emphasis on, on integration uh, to, 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 to your key management store. So based on this, uh, we decided that we have to take a look at, uh, at the solution from the, from, from the angle that we have to at least do as good for, for, for our favorite database. So we wanted to go on a lower than cluster granularity. Uh, all of those databases don't encrypt on a cluster level. They go minimum database level. Uh, we wanted to have, from the get-go, an integration with key management system. I, I, I don't really want to deal with key management on our own. There are systems for that. Let's, let's leave this, this risk to somebody else to handle. Uh, and most of the companies we speak with already have a solution for this. Up until recently, there was a great solution that was open source. No longer, uh, but open. Uh, some not tofu tofu is terraform uh, but what was uh, uh, for for high, for uh, vault open some some sort of bow yeah exactly sandwich so open bow is 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 an open source solution uh, for for uh, key ms uh, that, that actually exists mm, there's also uh, definitely a requirement for online encryption uh, so we would not have to restart the database and it would be great if we could actually put some configuration options for the uh, um, encryption alg algorithm sometime in the future. And uh, it would be great if we, ha we, we could have like a, a really big range of 
integrations with uh, KMSs. So this is only based on the learnings from observing uh, th those. We want also wanted to respect the community. Like, like what community does with PostgreSQL is great. And the fact that TDE isn't there, uh, it's, it's just something we, we want to, to help with. So we want to be a player uh, that in the community and, and helping help, helping community to get, make a, a better PostgreSQL. So uh, looking at the TD Wiki, uh, we've observed that there's three main uh, assumptions that the community made, and we want to maintain these. One of uh, obviously we want uh, our solution to be secure, uh, but there, there is a uh, very interesting phrasing of protecting the data against it intended uh, attacks, not all potential attacks. So, so this, is, uh, uh, the, the, this, this is quite uh, uh, in interesting phrasing that we took to heart. We do understand that making as minimal impact on the rest of PostgreSQL code is crit critical because we don't want the users who don't use TDE to be affected. We don't want the next upgrades, updates, maintenance to be costly because of uh, the features we introduce. And we wanted to meet regulatory uh, requirements, obviously, because we are doing this for, 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 uh, for people who are facing those requirements. One thing we do not agree with is the, not requirement, but the assumption made in the previously proposed offer, uh, uh, solutions. Every single discussion that I, I found was <coughs> uh, pointing to a cluster-wide encryption. Uh, some, some recent discussions uh, point to a database uh, level encryption, but uh, there was not a solution proposed yet for that. So, uh, focusing on a minimal impact on the rest of PostgreSQL code, we started thinking why should it be a core feature? Why cannot it be an extension? This way, with the great extensibility we have with, in PostgreSQL, we can deliver TDE with as small of a change to the core code, or even maybe without. Uh, so let's try to follow this kind of uh, thinking pattern. And we did. The first, uh, let's say, POC uh, was to do the encryption on the access method level. Uh, it does prove to work. I will point you out later on to a QR code to try out the version. It does have limitations. As you can see, it's on a totally different level than PG Krypton and PG Sodium as well. It's not on the executor level. Uh, the problem is, first of all, uh, we do encryption and decryption before the data gets to shared buffer. That's a problem and a benefit at the same time. A bigger problem than the benefit. Uh, the, the benefit is that, well, the data starting from shared buffer is encrypted. Well, great. The, the, the problem is that data has to be decrypted and encrypted every single time it goes to shared buffer, meaning that's a very significant performance penalty. Uh, also, uh, that means that if you do it on a uh, access method le level uh, for a table encryption, your table is encrypted, but your indexes aren't. So although you get a free encryption of data in wall, uh, there is a potential leak vector um, on indexes. And there is a very interesting discussion. As a product manager, I love experiencing that. This is the moment where I would love to sit back and eat popcorn. So you, you put one of the developers and you put a business, like, like an audit team a, a, ahead of each other, and you ask one, okay, is it good enough for production? Yes, of course, it, it encrypts. It may be a bit slower, we will make it faster, it does encrypt. The business says, yeah, but it does not scale. Like, I, how can I guarantee that PII data does not leak? Well, of course, you don't make, make indexes on, the, on this data. Really? So, 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 so this, this, this is this is the situation we're, we're in. I, I do want to keep this uh, this this uh, way uh, as like as alive as possible, so everybody can try it uh, to see that it works and proceed to the next one, because we observe that we cannot proceed much further with heap basic, because we would have to implement uh, an encryption uh, uh, ver encrypted version of every single index, and there is dozens of indexes like extensions introduce indexes. Cit Citus has its own in indexes that would not scale, uh, so we figured that maybe uh, let's try to make a change on a storage manager level. Uh, that unfortunately uh, meant that there has to be some core change. Fortunately enough, we did find found a. a uh, patch we, we can work with, but also meant that wall isn't encrypted. 
And that means from our perspective that we had to uh, also put, uh, make, make a change uh, to, to, to wall to make it more extensible. So what it brings us to is that uh, we now have to only encrypt and decrypt every single time we go to storage, which is a, well, which is a significant performance benefit over the other method. Uh, all the index data is encrypted, and we get out of the box replication support, which is great. Uh, well, the data uh, in, in, in the wall uh, has to be encrypted, and this is one of the uh, issues we are facing uh, with, uh, with the solution, but we already implemented uh, a way to solve it. Uh, currently, the implementation is very specific to this use case, and some of you uh, have been already approached by me, some of you will be approached by me, uh, about discussing to push uh, a, uh, uh, a more generalized version of our solution uh, into the core, hopefully uh, soon, to make uh, this uh, extension work uh, with the core uh, in, in the fashion it can already work with Percona server for PostgreSQL. So basically, what we did, we introduced those changes already as a tech preview uh, to, the, to PostgreSQL to make them uh, tech pre previewable for anybody who wants to try it, and to make the discussion easier as well with the community to make uh, those changes po more possible uh, in the core PostgreSQL. Uh, so we based on the, uh, I have to get, give kudos to Neon, uh, we, we based on the Neon patch uh, to the storage manager, we already uh, discussed with Neon and are going to be proposing some hardening changes uh, to, to the storage manager uh, API extension, or, or, uh, and, and now, now the story begins with, with discussion about uh, implementation uh, of uh, Mm, wall uh, extensibility. Uh, so let's take a quick look how easy it is to use. Uh, so with the extension loaded, when you already uh, enabled this uh, on, on your database, it's a matter of simply stating that you're using it while creating a table or, alt or using an alter statement. Uh, so, uh, obviously, you can already try out the TDE heap basic even with your uh, community PostgreSQL uh, deployment. Uh, for the uh, one using TDE heap, so the one without basic, we, we tried, like, trust me, naming things is horrible. Uh, so uh, we tried to make it explicit that the other one is limited, but like how to do it, not, not to make it too nasty. Uh, so, so this is the way we, we came up with, maybe. Um, I'm still open to, to, to suggestions if, we, if anybody sees that it can be done better. Uh, but uh, the fact is that TDE heap uh, already will encrypt uh, your indexes. It, it will already be way more performant and will support replication. And we uh, do uh, have an open tech preview uh, for that and would uh, definitely uh, appreciate if anybody wants to join and provide feedback. You can also see all the uh, code uh, on our GitHub, which, which I will proceed, uh, in a sec proceed to in a second. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, we implemented this, uh, it's visible on, on our GitHub, uh, you can see it from the version of 70.0.1. Uh, to get access to the uh, um, build for our server of the extension, uh, you have to talk to me, as we do not make it public yet, uh, to not make people who are very in rush to encrypt their data use a version that is pre-beta. And we actually do have those customers who really wanted to try an alpha version, and it scares the living piece out of me. Uh, mm, so uh, we already have like, like mentions that people try using it on, on production. Please don't. It's not ready for production. Like I, I don't know how bold you have to do it. Like I'm, we are taking any possible precaution not to make people use it on production yet. It will be GA ready. Trust us. But it takes time. Uh, so uh, the last uh, thing is, as I mentioned, we are going to contribute changes to uh, the committee PostgreSQL. And I would like or, or love if you could start our project. Thank you. <laughs> so this is, this, this is me begging for stars. Uh, and what now? So we do need contribution. Obviously, we do have code. We, we do have developers working on that. We will provide contribution, but we need feedback. We need feedback on user experience. Maybe documentation is not good, uh, good enough. Maybe uh, the user journey of, of somebody finding out and trying it out is not what you would love. And, and this is uh, something that, uh, this is a different QR, by the way. Uh, this one leads to our uh, PostgreSQL server that is already patched uh, with, with, uh, with the information, uh, what patches are uh, there and, and how to use it. 
So if you try it, uh, please do not hesitate to, to share feedback. This is my biggest gripe with open source as a product manager. I don't get feedback. With proprietary software, there is built-in telemetry that gets me information. With proprietary software, customers pay me and they always tell me that they don't like something. With open source, they don't feel inclined. Very often they don't they feel inclined to say something is hard. It's, it's been very con uh, hard to con uh, configure something. People don't come with this information and I have no way, easy way to find out uh, that it actually happened, that they left my user or customer journey into the product and because something was not obvious, because they expect that open source may not be the easiest thing to use. So I want to speed up to make sure that we have time for, uh, for, for questions. So I would like to say that hopefully with our extension, we can put some clothing, some open source clothing on the king, on the emperor. Uh, so please do contact me if you want to participate in the tech preview. And the beta build for Community PG is here at your fingertips. Please try it out if you want to, not on production. Uh, and do let us know uh, your feedback about it. Thank you. Thank you. For, firstly, uh, why we are not using to uh, custom implemented solutions like, for example, Rails has uh, built in uh, data in at uh, REST and data in transit solutions for encryption. So why we are not using that instead of um, TDA or a uh, different way? So uh, I mentioned before, uh, so data in, uh, at rest uh, versus data in transit and data, data in use, these are different layers. Uh, attack vector can happen to every single uh, one of these. So it's not using instead, it's using together. You should, be use, you should be using HTTPS and you should be encrypting your data at rest. These are separate use cases that have to be protected separately. So I, I would not say using instead, but, but these are layers that you should put on top of each other because the uh, perpetrator, I guess is the name, can, uh, or intruder, can, can, can try to gain access to your information in multiple different ways. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for your presentation. I have uh, two questions. Uh, first is about uh, your plans on uh, backporting to the previous versions of this uh, hopefully amazing extension. Uh, so so uh, backporting is something that definitely can happen and very likely will happen. But currently, the focus is, like we had a long discussion about this. Yeah, uh, I understand. I, I, I do want to limit uh, the dev stage until we go, let's say, GA with the first version to only one version. It's, uh, it speeds up the process. Also, because we are contributing changes to uh, PostgreSQL to make it happen, I don't think that the core, that the community here, has the pattern of backporting a change. Unfortunately, with the uh, PGTDE, uh, I don't think it uh, can happen with, uh, with, with community. That being said, it's not out of the picture for us to provide, like for us as Percona, to provide the build of the previous version of soft servers with the patch that gets us accepted. It's totally not out, out of the picture. That's, uh, that's why we do have, like I don't like to call it fork, but we have a patched version of PostgreSQL that we put under our name and our distribution and we maintain separately so that we can do things like that. Uh, and uh, the second question is uh, about uh, altering tables uh, to use, uh, to force them use uh, this TDE extension. Like, uh, is it possible to to alter existing table with, with data? Yes. Oh, okay. Can I, um, sorry for back to the uh, same topic again. So I just trying to ask for, uh, there is already solution f uh, for built in Rails for data in REST encryption. So why we I have to use TDA still? Because already I know my key, 
already using a Ikea mask. So why I have to use TDE still? Because so, I don't need to encrypt my schema or et cetera. I, I'm not sure if I understand your question correctly because yeah. the way I understand is you, uh, you're speaking as a developer, developing an application, uh, encrypting on the application level, yeah. right? This yeah. is not data address encryption. This is actually the best encryption you can have. Mm -hmm. Awesome that you can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the customers we speak with uh, says, and this is go going to be a para quote from me, uh, our security team demands that we use application level encryption where we can. In 90% of situations we can't. It requires heavy application changes. We very often don't have access to the proprietary software that, we, that actually puts the data in our pro the database. We cannot make it encrypt on app level. We have software that we no longer have maintainers for. This is scary because I know what they're doing, like financial uh, uh, co uh, company. Uh, we cannot make changes on this level. Uh, and the second uh, level of that actually our security team accepts is TDE, is transparent data encryption address. The last one is the file system or operating system level. This is the uh, most disliked by our uh, um, security team. So, 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 so this is, I, I, I would love if all applications could uh, um, encrypt uh, on app level. And this is maybe something to focus later on because this is a way more complicated discussion. This would require some changes on the driver level very, very, very possibly. Uh, and uh, with PostgreSQL and the kind of vastness of, uh, of, of versions, uh, I'm not sure that would be an easy story. Oh. Yes? Oh. Uh, thank you. Um, you mentioned that uh, at that point, TD is not planned for uh, cluster level, or you exclude cluster level TD like at the beginning of the talk. You can achieve cluster level by uh, encrypting uh, all databases, uh, encrypting all tables. So we, we went on a lower in, granularity. In, sorry, including system tables? So system tables is a change that we will work to introduce, that being said, we do not believe that system tables are a strong league vector. We are going to potential versus uh, probable. Okay. Uh, I, I have in mind one, one table, okay. PG auth ID with list of users and password hashes, and all those data m might create new uh, attack surface. Of course, so this is we are following a similar pattern to, and here I, I understand, like I, I'm, I'm a new to, a person to community, so I, I walk, walk on a, a thin line by mentioning other databases, but I will. Uh, so this is the pattern that uh, my SQL went as well. So you have to start somewhere. Uh, this is the less, pot let, let's say, least probable attack ver vector of the, uh, of the ones we, we, we wanted to address. And this is definitely a change that is going to come. But as I mentioned, this is just the version one that we are aiming at for right now. Uh, is there any way to limit access to the decryption key to a specific role? So for example, I have a role and I don't want to grant this role uh, access to the key. Uh, and uh, if the role ex somehow uh, accesses the uh, using vulnerability or something like this, like we had in previous uh, uh, talk on Wednesday, uh, it accesses column and it's encrypted. And it's like garbage there. You, Is it you, possible to do this? You're looking on a, uh, for a column level encryption uh, with strong RBAC, like again, I, I'm not knowing other databases, so th stuff like, for example, Snowflake does, right? So, so you go and you don't see data or you see the data hashed uh, when, when, when you don't have particular rights to a particular column, right? Uh, it's like, uh, uh, I don't want uh, to grant uh, the, uh, the access to the key to the Postgres role. So for example, I have two applications and I don't want uh, to grant uh, access to the key to specific applications. So we're not on a column level, level board, but table level, and we are ready to have a discussion to do it multi-user because this is what, what you're describing as a multi-user use case. The current use case is not. And this is my explicit decision as a PM. I removed this requirement for a single reason it complicates the user experience to the hellish level. And I want this uh, uh, to be easy. This does not mean that we cannot bring it. It means that for now, the more demanding situation is to have TDE at all. 
whether, like, how big interest is going to be there for, for such a, an approach, as you're mentioning. And we're totally open to working out this, uh, uh, this, this, this together as well. So, so the code is ready to, to potentially provide it as the solution is currently already multi-tenant. Uh, you can already have uh, multiple, uh, uh, it's, it's ready for application on, on, on cloud or on our uh, solution called Percona Everest where you can basically de deploy cloud-like solution uh, on Kubernetes as well. Hey, thank you for the presentation. Uh, quick one, what are the performance implications? I love that I get this question on a uh, pre-beta build. Uh, but uh, so I can say we are aiming with the PG TDE uh, with the one that requires the patches to be around 5 to 20 percent overhead. That's the aim. Uh, currently, uh, we have the basic one tested with around 50 percent overhead. So that's, uh, that's, that's what I can say right now. And these are still even for the TDE heap basic, I'm talking tests that, are, that have been done on a beta level. We are not GA with any of these. And typically performance tests happen, at least in my experience, before you go like on a production level. Currently there are still a lot of changes and you don't want to do performance tests every single time you have those changes. But uh, I, I, can, I can share the, let's say the, I can share that the developer promised me that he can go down to 5%. Like if I trusted that, <laughs> I can share what somebody promised me. Like I, I, I will try to keep him to this promise. But like, <laughs> any other questions? Oh, before you all go, if anybody registered with us by scanning the QR code, in ten minutes, I guess I don't have time in front of me, but like ten thirty, uh, eleven thirty. Sorry, there is going to be a raffle, I guess. Uh, to win this Kanakit Raspberry Pi 5 starter kit.